Welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. What does asbestos management mean to you? I used to really struggle with the asbestos management at my site, but now it's a breeze. It used to be really expensive. I was paying loads, but now I've got my asbestos power team in place. It's so much easier. Asbestos could be a pain in the ass if not handled right. We had to stop the job because asbestos was discovered. Now we don't have that problem. Asbestos management is easier than you think. Asbestos management, be proactive, not reactive. Think about asbestos first, not last. And now your hosts, best-selling authors and asbestos experts, Ian Stone and Neil Munro. Hi, welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. I'm Ian Stone. I'm Neil Munro. So today we're talking about well, floor covering removals as a whole gambit, really, aren't we? Yeah, the problems and issues surrounding that. Um, yeah. There's lots of different types of I was what we class as asbestos floor coverings, isn't there? And mm. um, probably the most common ones, vinyl tiles or thermoplastic tiles, yeah. kind of similar. Thermoplastic ones are a bit more brittle around they? and um, got a bit of a higher asbestos content than vinyl, but they kind of essentially look they're, similar. They're don't one they? and the same. It's yeah. floor tiles, really, isn't it? Um, um, what else? You can have paper backed lino as well. So yeah. a lino covering with an asbestos paper that's on the backing of the actual covering itself and then there's lots of different other ones like screeds bitumens even some sort of like damp proof flooring yeah floor damp proof coverings. paints and floor coverings beneath other kind of coverings yeah but essentially yeah the most common ones is, is the vinyls and the thermoplastic yeah. ones and, uh, <laughs> and the linos really it's a funny subject in, in the respect of it's quite low risk yeah it's, so they, these would typically be non-licensed works yeah but it's that they can be some of the, the hardest jobs. Yeah, they really can. Some of the hardest for the operatives to crack on and remove. Yes. Yes. Some of the hardest for the analysts to undertake inspections of. Yep. I've definitely seen more asbestos removal contractors with blisters on their hands from doing these types of works than any other yeah. asbestos removal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, and, it's and, and the variance of it as well yeah. is, you know, you could have a vinyl job, a vinyl removal job, which is the easiest job in the world, or it could be the pain of death to yeah. get these vinyl <laughs> tiles off. Yes. Yeah, some of them are just stuck down. I mean, when you think about it, some of the ones that have been down, and there's no consistency, no. and that's the thing, right? So you take look a, at it and you think, don't know how they're going to come up yeah. until you start. It's <laughs> like you look at them on the whole, and you could have two schools next to each other that were both built at the same time, both constructed by the same construction companies. One lot of tiles that have been down 30, 40, 50 years, yep. and the guys will just get a scraper, start on one, and literally walk up, and they all ping up, don't they, straight away. They're nice all and easy. Whole, all nice. They can yeah. be bagged up nicely. And then the other one, they, well, it, it's hammer and bolster, isn't it, to literally... Chip up every single tile. Yeah, even breakers. Yeah, breakers yeah. are needed. Yeah, it's madness. Absolute yeah. madness. So th there are quite a few different things to think Variance, about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think some of the, the variants are is, you know, how much adhesive has been used and how much wear as well. That I think that affects it. Like the wearing down and the compressing of mm. um, the tiles onto the floor can affect it. You know, where you've had high traffic areas. Yeah, a lot of footfall in corridors or vestibules and things like that. Yeah. That they tend to be stuck down quite solidly, yes, don't they? Yes, definitely. So, yeah, so we kind of wanted to talk to today of some of the, the issues and the problems surrounding the removal of these and again it's all about as we said these are non-licensed work so technically speaking you don't need to employ a HSC licensed contractor no. but as we'd always recommend those people those guys this is what they do so they've got everything that's in place and um, for instance they've got all the training in place they've got all the correct certified and quality checked equipment, yeah. you know, all the vacuum cleaners, that, you know, DOP tested. Um, they've got the correct waste vehicles to, to get rid of all the waste. And they're experts at cleaning. And that's a really good point uh, to highlight on these types of jobs. Okay, it's a non-licensed job, but when we're talking about asbestos removal of vinyl tiles, the debris that sometimes is created from the, removal of this yeah, it can be a lot. You know, really long. where you're talking about removing these vinyl tiles, they can 
Sometimes they completely disintegrate into... They splinter and shatter into exactly that. thousands of pieces <clears throat> and you'll find that they ping off everywhere. Yes. And like we've done projects in school halls before where the guys are removing the floor tiles but they've been that disintegrated and they disintegrate that much when they're removing. Yeah. You've got like four or five metres at ledges where you've got like the windows around the side and then when you're doing the, the guys are doing the final inspection... You're finding little shards of vinyl tiles sort of four or five metres up in the air because they're pinged from there all the way up, haven't they? Yeah, and we're using a HC licensed contract as well. They're kind of geared up for this. Yeah. And they predict this and they're geared up to kind of, you know, we see their contracts and they sheet out these areas, so they sheet the windows off, particularly radiators as well. They sheet the radiators out. So if any debris does come off of the actual vinyl tiles, it's not going down the back of the radiators and stuff like no. that. So that's, you know... Although it's not a full enclosure, they're adding in these protections. It's putting the right controls in place. Exactly that. Because if you get vinyl tile debris that goes behind a radio in the grills, it's really, really difficult to get that out. Mm -hmm. If you can actually get that out. So, yeah, that's a real kind of important thing. So Yeah, you can create more of an issue with the removal with not fully trained people doing it than what the asbestos was in the first place. Yeah, and everyone going into doing these removal works, you know, from a client point of view, kind of thinks, well, it's very low risk. It's a very low risk job. But actually, that low risk job can sometimes turn into, you know, quite a high risk Mm. um, activity because of the nature of the material that's being removed. I mean, after the tiles are gone, a lot of the times it was the black or blackjack asbestos adhesive that was used to put the tiles down and to glue them in place. You're left with this black smear of of adhesive. Again, a lot of the time it's fully set, so it's quite difficult to get off. But again, sometimes you come across it and it's still sticky, isn't it? Yeah. So again, that's its own inherent problem, removing that. And I mean, Because that, that's got asbestos content as well sometimes, yes. hasn't it? Yeah. When you're removing that, I mean, essentially there's only a couple of ways to remove it and it's mechanical methods of grinding that floor surface down or chemical methods. Now, chemical methods... They work, but they're messy. It's horrible to work with. You're bringing in other risks, fire hazards, things like that. Intoxication or that. Yeah, exactly. And then even after you've removed it all, you're still left with like the black stain, aren't you, on the floor? So it doesn't look that great. No, it doesn't look like you're doing anything. (laughs) No. So the best way is the mechanical method, like using the diamond floor grinders and stuff like that. But I mean, they're horrendous in themselves. They're better than they used to be because now you can fit hoses to them and they've got vacuums attached and things like that. However, a lot of dust is still generated. Yeah. And trying to keep on top of that dust and remove the flooring is a very difficult thing. Yeah, really, if you are doing that kind of, that floor screeded removal, that needs to be done under, you know, enclosure. Not necessarily full enclosure, but nigh on enough of an enclosure. Everything needs to be cleanable because dust is generated. And sometimes you do need to have negative pressure just to keep the dust levels down. And the particular issue with those grinding machines, they don't always get to the edge. Yeah, they never get to the edge. They always leave, like, literally a couple of inches, don't they, at the edge? Because you just can't get close enough with the actual, you know, the the screeding... Uh, mechanical access equipment. Um, yeah, because on the equipment, it'll have a guard where the grinding plate spins yeah. and there's a guard that always, it will never go all the way up to that edge of the wall. So yeah. what then needs to happen, again, either the guys need to go in there using hand tools to remove it or using grinders to remove it. But then, I mean, again, the grinders still leave a gap because they have guards on. Um, so whatever you end up doing, that it is kind of a, a laborious hand tool job to get all of the screed up around the edge yeah and sometimes with the other issues with this is sometimes it don't take into account the new layers of floor coverings that are on there now sometimes where asbestos vinyl tiles have been over carpeted then when you come to take the non-asbestos floor covering off the vinyl tiles yes. or, or that are stuck to it. Yeah, it all sticks to the back all of it, doesn't it? So sometimes schools, that's... Schools and offices, that, yeah, that that's not taken into account. And all that, because they've got asbestos tiles stuck to them, they have, that has to be disposed of as yeah. um, asbestos waste as well. They do. And that's a very big point because if somebody prices the job just to remove asbestos floor tiles and they haven't got the expertise to know that, well, all of that carpet is contaminated because the likelihood is they're all going to be stuck to it 
then they're probably going to come back to you and ask for more money. Yeah. Which isn't a very good situation to be in. Also, that might affect your actual project timing because removing not just the floor tiles, but the overlaying modern flooring, be it carpet, linoleum, whatever, can add a lot more time. Yeah, definitely. And, and again... Um, and wait. And, you yeah. know, wait from a waste point of view, um, you know, you're essentially more than doubling the waste weight yeah. um, with and removing those. It depends on what it is and where it is. I mean, I've seen some really thick linoleums used in kind of access points into buildings. It's super thick because it's there, it's got a lot of footfall on it, so yeah. it, it needs to take a lot of foot pounding. And the guys that have did a, a removal project, they struggled like hell, didn't they, to get that up. Like you say earlier, using mechanical breakers and things like that to, to get this poxy bloody lino up before they even got to the asbestos. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it? It's crazy. Yeah, some other issues, obviously, where building layouts have changed, you typically can have partition walls that have been placed on top of the mm. actual rooms. Um, skirting boards as well, um, generally... If it's been fitted, um, you know, the floor's been fitted before the skirting boards went on, then usually they lip underneath, don't they? They do, yeah. And that's the problem, because if you're removing all the asbestos, well, unless you're chopping out the bottom section of the wall and removing the skirting boards and things like that, you are going to be left with small sections and small strips of asbestos vinyl. Yeah. Um, which, again, it's if you're going for wholesale removal, well... It's something you need to consider because you're still going to be left with these strips of vinyl tiles underneath these sections, which still have to be managed. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it's like the risk of disturbance that obviously you can't get to it, but it's something to bear in mind of, you know, if you're going to take that wall out or... Yeah, exactly, it might affect things in the future. In the future, yeah, and sometimes you're not going to always know that unless you've got, you know, a history of the building. Sometimes it's not always practical to identify whether those tiles do go underneath the walls until you actually come and do the job. So yeah, they're common occurrences in undertaking these types of works and sometimes you may need your consultant or a removal contract to liaise with you to see what you want to do. Because there are options, you know, you can take the skirting boards off or you can sometimes either if it's a plasterboard wall, take a section of the plasterboard of the bottom off yeah. to actually get the tiles out. But again, that would be down to the kind of the client preference on that. Mm. There's something else to consider as well. Even though they are low risk products it's the fear factor around asbestos removal and a lot of the time they were using offices schools large public buildings they were generally where asbestos flooring and floor tiles were, were yeah, laid and local authority domestic housing yeah. as well you know used it in a lot of their properties they really were and the second i mean we know this from asbestos it's an emotive word but people don't understand the risk factors with it it's just in their mind asbestos is one big thing and one big problem so you need to allow for that in your works as well with air monitoring and, and project management of that project because it's one thing to have the asbestos removed and removed safely, but secondly, it's kind of how do you show that to people and how do you give them the reassurance, the information that, no, the, the building is now safe to reaccess and reoccupy. Parent and teacher associations want that reassurance for their staff and their school children to go back in there. So how can you do that? Well, one way to do it is to have air monitoring throughout the project and a final sign-off by a, an independent consultancy. That is a vital element, I find, because as we described, sometimes the actual removal process creates such an amount of debris um, that really you do need an independent set of eyes to come in and, and visually inspect those areas to mm. make sure all the dust and debris and the vinyl bits, you know, the, the shards of vinyl have been removed fully. That's a really vital point to include, which, you know, doesn't always happen on these types of works, does no, it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I mean, by law, it doesn't. It's it doesn't not need needed. No. And the contractors can self-certify that that area is, is clean and it's okay to reoccupy, but... Like I say, when somebody's looking for that level of reassurance of how do I categorically know that it's safe? Well, the only way to do that is to present them with some certification from an independent consultancy that's visually inspected and air tested that area. That way you've then got that kind of that proof to show and reassure people. And rightly so, because asbestos is emotive and people do need that reassurance. Yeah. One thing to add on that is like, although it's a non licensed activity, the waste generated for that has to be treated exactly the same way. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've heard of some 
non-licensed contractors, you know, just slinging the vinyl tiles into open skips and stuff like that. This needs to be treated exactly the same from a waste point of view of being double bagged and disposed of correctly. Because although some sort of hazardous waste companies may let you throw that into an open skip, really the best practice is to always double bag it and to make sure that there's no dust and debris. Um, because what happens is sometimes when you put vinyl tiles into bags, because of the, the sharpness of the items, they can pierce the bags and empty out. So having a competent contractor that can handle that and do that correctly and making sure that there's you know no escape of asbestos debris through, through the working areas, through the transit and waste routes. And, and that, that really, is really, really important. That is a big one. Like the shards can pierce the bottom of the bag and then there's the contractors taken the waste out to their skip or to their van. It's not uncommon for little bits to fall out the bottom of the bags, yeah. uh, especially if it's only single bagged. So that's yeah. why the double bagging is best practice. Yeah, exactly. That's vital, I, I find, in doing these jobs because anything less um, does create problems. Mm, it does indeed. Well, I hope you find that uh, useful. And uh, listen, if you do need any advice or you've got any issues surrounding the removal of asbestos floor coverings, reach out to us. You can reach us on our Facebook community page, Asbestos Knowledge Empire. You know, hopefully you can join us there and you get instant access to myself and Ian. Okay, thanks for that. Remember, asbestos first, not last. <laughs>